Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, the show for those looking to get the most out of their time on Zwift. So let's see what we've got coming up in the show this week for you. I speak to lead game designer Wes Salmon about an exciting new in-game feature. We check in on my gravel challenge training regime, which may or may not be going to plan. My favorite cycling coach and own private Yoda, Shane Gaffney, drops in to talk us through his latest workout of the week. I try out a TikTok challenge in the feed zone. We speak to Nathan Guerra about the highlights from Zwift Racing League Season 3 Community Division. Pro mountain biker Leah Davidson gives us a rider recon of this week's group Pride Ride. And we shall crown this week's Headband Hero. Now you know that I love it when you get involved in the show, so please hit the like and subscribe button. Let us know in the comments what you've been up to this week. And whilst you do that, I'm going to enjoy this rather lovely weather we've been having recently. So if you don't mind, we're just gonna take a little time. Ah, like the macho man went on holiday to Benidorm. Done? Excellent, let us continue. There are over 80 routes in Swift, but often I forget which ones I've actually ridden. I thought I was a completist, turns out I'm not. Now, wouldn't it be handy if there was maybe some sort of tick box system to remind you? Fortunately, lead game designer Wes Salmon is here right now to tell us more about that. Wes, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, how you been doing? Oh, all right, thank you very much. Excited about this new release. Talk to me about this new release. So in the upcoming release, uh, we actually have some changes to how you select routes in Zwift, and we made a few quality of life improvements so that you kind of get a better feel for how long the route will actually be, uh, including lead-in, uh, which has been a problem for especially racers that want to know exactly how long they need to spend at on the rivet, uh, and they don't have the lead-in information to know that they need to actually spend three or four K getting to the actual race circuit. So that'll be an improvement there. Uh, but the really big improvement around the route selection screen is that we've built a system, really simple system, that allows you to understand which routes you've completed the achievement badge for, so you can badge hunt a little bit more effectively when you're selecting your route. So uh, when you log in, you'll see all the routes as you normally do, uh, and right beside each route, you'll see a checkbox. Uh, if the gray checkbox is there, that means the route has not had the achievement completed for you, so you can go and chase it down. If the check mark is green, that means you've completed the achievement and you don't need to chase it if you're interested in chasing the achievements. You see, I always thought I was a completist. Turns out I never have the staying power to complete anything. I'm actually completing, not completing things. But shout out to my friend Carlos, who is desperately trying to do all of the routes within Zwift. And lots of people want to do this, don't they? They want to tick off everything. And as you say, up till now, it was difficult to know what you'd done. Yeah, um, for the last few years, the community has really stepped up and helped other Zwifters understand exactly which routes they needed to complete through different spreadsheets and uh, PDFs that they would share in the Facebook groups. But most recently, Zwift Hub did a great job of allowing you to go in and log in and select the routes that you know you've completed, put the check mark by them, and then every time you wanted to Zwift, you would consult Zwift Hub to find out which routes you needed to complete to continue your badge hunt. And this is really important for people, not only that are completionists for the routes, but also people that are trying to level up faster. Because again, every time you complete a route achievement, you get a big boost of XP. Um, the other thing you mentioned was the fact that you now know how long your lead-in is. Like most people, I have been caught out by the lead-ins and they've been longer than I thought. And I've got to the end of what I thought was a 20, 25, 30K race and I'm still going. How much of a big moment do you think this is for people who are racing? I think it'll be very big. Um, typically lead-ins for normal rides, free rides and group rides, they're more like bonus miles, uh, but you don't want any bonus miles on a race. Uh, you really wanna know exactly when you need to, to, to be on the power and when you can get off the power so you can plan out your pacing properly. And without understanding the lead-in, uh, it was a bit of a guesswork, for, especially for new racers who didn't spend a lot of time reconning the course uh, internally in Zwift or with external tools uh, like the tools on Strava or Zwift Power uh, or Zwift Hacks. As you said, Wes, uh, people can now tick off the world. You get a big dump, don't you, of XP when you do this, of drops. Uh, people can now level up quicker. They can get to the better bikes and the better wheels. Yeah, for sure. And the distance that you cover in the route will dictate how big of an XP drop you get at the end of that route. So if you're really struggling to kind of get over that hump, if you're trying to get to level 10, level 20, or level 30, where you get that big bike and that really cool jersey for that level, maybe focus on getting the longer routes completed so you do get a much larger XP boost at the end of that route. Very personal question here, Wes. What level are you? 
I'm, I'm level 50. Oh, there we go. And another question, this is a wild card <laughs> level. With all these boosts and things going on, if you could build your dream world, what would it be? That one's really tough because our, our team does a lot of amazing stuff uh, and I wouldn't want to put them in a corner by having a dream world that they haven't planned on building yet. Um, but when I think about how you Zwift in worlds, I think a lot about the functionality of, that the world can bring. Uh, and one of the things that keeps coming back to my mind is uh, every few years, there's some crazy mountain biker that'll do some jump over the Tour de France. They'll, they'll do a crazy Peloton jump backflip or whatever. And it's happened a number of different times. Uh, those type of moments, those kind of extreme, I could never do that in real life moments, trying to replicate those in Zwift would be really cool. Um, one of the ways we could do that would be doing something like a space station. You can never ride a bike in space. Well, on Zwift, maybe you could. And maybe there's a way to make it really, really fun and engaging without making it feel like you're not riding bikes anymore. So finding ways to take those epic moments that you couldn't do in real life or couldn't do at all and finding ways to adapt them to Zwift to make them feel fun and engaging uh, and interesting uh, is kind of my, my overall perfect world kind of situation. Wes, I'm completely on board with this. So we're talking about space, but spelt with a Z. Sure. <laughs> with uh, a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another question for you, actually. So we're talking about completing routes and ticking things off, and there's now the system to be able to do that and the latest update. For you, what is the ultimate Zwift route? What is that one route that if you've not ticked it off, you should tick it off now? Oh, wow. That was a tough one. Um, for me, I mean, again, hometown Richmond boy, the Richmond UCI course holds a special place in my heart because I know so many of the places that you actually ride by, like the houses that are modeled, um, in that area are places that I knew people that lived in those houses. So for me, it's, it's somewhere where you can actually identify the area to where you have a connection. Um, outside of that, some of the most fantastic parts of Watopia under the water uh, or, or up really high up on the Alp when you're trying to see if you can find the Yeti, like those kind of things when it starts snowing when you didn't expect snow. Um, those are the kind of moments that really make a difference for users. But there's so many of them around. There's not one route that covers them all. Oh, you're on the fence there. I feel you're on the fence <laughs> with that question, Wes. But listen, thank you very much for answering it. As always, Wes in space. I'm totally on board with that. We'll speak to you next time. Thank you very much, buddy. All right. See you, OJ. For those of you who have been watching this show regularly, you'll know that expert coach Shane the Gaffer Gaffney has been putting me through my paces. I prepare for my intense gravel challenge. I'm now three weeks into my four-week training plan. So let's see how I'm getting on taking my Cat B Big Dog Zwift form outdoors. All right then. I'm out for my long ride. And I'm actually out on the gravel bike, which has this lefty front fork and I'm heading out to Hayfield which is a bit of a mecca for cyclists because Nick Craig who yes is possibly about five years older than me but is one of the best cyclists in the area both off-road and on so I'm gonna ride with him which will be fun right where are we Nick Craig legend of the area peaks man me they're not peaks. This is why people ride gravel. They look at it. How you going there, Nick? I'm coming. Oh, my gravel's so much harder than anything. I'm not walking up the rest of this time. Here we go. Straight up. Great. Oh. Okay. so much harder than riding up the road. But luckily, Nick was my Obi-Wan. I am outrageously toasted. Outrageously. To stop in a garage. Just got back. Every part of me hurts, not just my legs, like my shoulders, my chest, my knees, my soul. And I've got two weeks till the road. I need to get better at gravel. That's a whole new world of pain. First time back in the turbo since my uh, big old gravel ride, longest ride I've done so far. I didn't feel particularly great. I thought by this point, 
I feel like there was excitement in my legs, dynamite in my soul, and I just felt like a hot big slug. So uh, I think I need to talk to Shane. So I'm getting a bit panicky. So talk to me about the gravel ride. When I was climbing, it was really broken terrain and it was having to put those extra little digs in to get up. What should I do to help me around that? Because that's where I really struggled, where I felt my legs were letting. Sure, so really practice will make perfect there. So riding your bike more over gravel and those types of surfaces will help a tremendous amount. And then that's also where that low cadence work we do once a week comes into play too, because on the road, you really don't have to apply much torque to maintain traction. So you can really spin a pretty high cadence on the road. But when you're in gravel or on uneven terrain, you have to apply more torque to the pedals. So I say two things would be continue to ride your bike more on gravel, continue to practice. Don't get frustrated with it if you do struggle because you just haven't done it for a while. And then make sure you get that low uh, cadence, high torque workout in each week to also mimic the demands needed for those kinds of uh, terrain. And yeah, hopefully you will sleep, you will eat well, and you will stay hydrated for the whole week too. That'd be really beneficial too, I think. Who knows when we get to Griffith? I could be a physical specimen. You could be a bronze Adonis, as you said mm -hmm. before, right? Do you want me to take my shirt off now to show you where I'm at? Please. <laughs> If you agree with Envy at my tailored coach Gaffney training plan, well, never fear because he's created a series of workouts just for you and bazillions of other Zwifters out there as well. And here is the man himself to tell us what we can expect from this latest installment of Workout of the Week called Eyes on the Pride. This week's Workout of the Week was created by Zwift employee Logan DeBoard and is called Eyes on the Pride. For Pride On 2021, Logan says, I wanted to share my favorite effort in cycling. There's something special about grassroots cyclocross in the US. You race your best, dust yourself off, then cheer for everyone else. This workout is a full-on race simulation of a shorter cyclocross or a mountain bike short track race. And it includes a full warm-up, basically a version of the race itself designed to open your legs and lungs, and a tough three-lap race simulation within the limits of ERG on your trainer. Make sure you go into this one with a great recovery. This one will keep your heart rate up and your legs burning. There are plenty of twists and turns as you power through high cadence corners and right over those pesky roots and mud puddles in the trees. Keep your power up with a bit of recovery on the straights and then through the sand to finish on the podium. Feed zone time now where I try out the latest ride fuel trends and crazes on your behalf. And this week, the youth of Zwift tell me people on TikTok are squirting hot mustard on top of watermelon. And it got me thinking, could this be the perfect ride fuel? We know that watermelon helps replace electrolytes. And I've been told mustard contains WADA approved steroids that can build muscle mass. Who knew? Now I've already tried watermelon. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Ah, oh, it's like being on a beach where everyone hates you. Oh, 100% ew. And I've also tried mustard. Oh, I'm eating this via my sinuses. Oh, 100% ew as well. And I still have heartburn. So let us see how the two of them taste together. Here we have watermelon, freshly sliced up. Here we have mustard, moutard, out of the jar. Now it's that big old traditional yellow mustard. So we'll take a big slice of watermelon. Let's liberally coat it as if this is a children's TV program. And here's one I prepared earlier. So a bit more on if you're going to do the feed zone. Let's make sure we're doing it properly. Oh God, I'm salivating just at the thought of this. Possibly more in fear than of actual taste. So watermelon coated with mustard. Is it the new ride fuel that we all need? Here we go. Oh, got the nostrils again. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. That, oh God, I've got hiccups. That's not bad. Obviously you've got that initial spice of the mustard, which is literally burning my lips as I talk and burning me through the inside. I'm one big ball of flames right now. You know those blue flames in you, Maisie? I'm one of those. But 
The sweetness and the freshness of the watermelon is pretty tasty. Oh, if I was going to take someone out for a nice dinner, I'd absolutely make them eat this. And then film it and put it on the internet and make millions. No! Oh. As we wave goodbye to another incredible ZRL season, the all-important community playoffs have now been completed as well. And a man who was across all of those, and in fact has seen so much ZRL racing in his life, I'm pretty sure there'll be a statue of him in Watopia at some point soon. It's Nathan Guerra. Nathan, how are you, buddy? Hey, OJ. Good to see you. And I'm not sure about having a uh, you know, Rocky Balboa-esque statue downtown Watopia, but I appreciate that. I would tip my hat to it every time I rode past, as and when it happens. Now, Nathan, tell me, let's, let's start with the format of the playoffs. How did this work? How did this work for the teams that wanted to go up into the Premier Division? Yeah, so on the men's and the women's side of things, we had a points race and a team time trial. On the first day of the playoffs, it was a team time trial for the men, a points race for the women. And on the second day, it was a TTT for the women and a points race for the men. Uh, they were out on the out and back again for the team time trial, and they were on San and Sequoias for two laps for the points race. So let's start with the women then. Who's gone up? Yeah, sure. It's going to be Kirchberg Dev team that's going to be going up that took first place. They kind of took it to Egowad a little bit in the first day, ended up walking away, playing a lot of good games uh, against uh, Egowat. And then uh, and then in the team time trial, Egowat suffered up front and then almost brought it back for a win, ended up uh, losing to them by about 13 seconds. But as far as the feel these two teams kind of what they bring is their brand Kirchmer it's kind of classic with Kirchmer they've got a, a men's team represented in, in the premier division already and it's kind of head down get the work done show up and uh and you know kick butt as best as they possibly can egwat has got the same thing as far as you know uh, work ethic and and showing up and taking uh, results, but at the same time, whenever you hang out with Egawat, you feel like you're at a dance party. <laughs> like there's a, there's a little bit more of like um, this uh, uh, sparkle. It feels like Sparkle Watts if you watch any of uh, the Scott Red Mountain Bike Racing Team uh, with Kate Courtney a little bit. So pretty cool and uh, definitely two uh, different kinds of attitudes. It seems like coming to the racing, uh, but they both definitely get it done and. Uh, I think both of them are going to probably, my, my guess on, on that is they're definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with the moment that they walk into uh, the premier division. Uh, podium spots can be tough to come by, but uh, I think they're right on the edge of it, actually. Well, we can't wait to see both of them in the next season of the ZRL. Uh, let's talk the men's then. Who's gone up from the men's and what are they going to bring to that division? <sighs> this was so close on the men's side of things. It came right down to it and what's also crazy about this is some of the story that was coming in from season two and those who were trying to get into the premier division in season two and like were right on that bubble played out actually into season three uh so absolutely crazy how it ended up playing out it was deepak elite that ended up taking it down now that wasn't across both days no walk away they ended up getting the gold silver was cryo rdt followed up by and this is this this is kind of that cinderella story almost or actually cinderella story kind of really long suffering story though too fusion ect made it but just barely by one point up against velocio and then team italy were also right on the bubble and one of the things, another thing to talk about here is that on the team side of things, the leaderboard changed a few times way after the main group sprint at the end. So everybody's sprint to the line at the end of the day for all the points that were being rewarded mattered, which is one of the coolest things about this format, not just at this top level in the A and Premier Division level, but when you start looking down further into all the community racing that we've seen through all of season three, it's been really awesome to see that everybody's effort has mattered for their team. And I think that's really what's made uh, the Zwift Racing League so fun for everybody in this community. Well, I can't wait for the next season to start. I can't wait to see how these teams do as well. Remember, if you want to catch any of these races, you can find them on the ZCL, on the Zwift Community Live, and see, as Nathan said, some of the most vibrant racing we've seen over the course of the last year. Nathan, as always, mate, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks a lot, OJ. 
As part of our ongoing LGBTQIA plus celebrations throughout June, there will be a series of pride rides and runs where you'll have the chance to make new friends, catch pride ons and unlock new kits. This week, there's a group ride around the Beach Island Loop and here's Pro Mountain Biker and two-time Olympian, Leah Davison, to talk us through what we can expect. Hello, welcome to the Beach Island Loop free ride. This course is relatively flat and we chose this loop because the pride ride that we'll be doing is more about enjoying the ride all together and just celebrating Pride Month. It is a 12.8 kilometer loop. It's relatively little elevation gain with just 44 meters or 144 feet. The start and finish is in downtown Watopia, which is where we are now. And as you can see, we are riding towards the volcano, which is one of my favorite parts. Okay, so now we're in the volcano. There's a little bit of a climb, and then we're kind of, it levels off here. It's kind of flat to downhill, so after that little effort of that climb, this is another good opportunity to get behind somebody draft and conserve energy. So the important thing about this pride ride on the Beach Island Loop is that it's going to be a slow pace ride. So really it's about riding together and, and being together and celebrating Pride Month. So you can join and you can go whatever pace that you're comfortable riding at. So now we're going up the dirt switchbacks to the Italian Villa. And since this is a little bit of a climb, then, and it's also dirt, you'll have to put out a little bit more power to, to get up these switchbacks and get over the dirt. This is one of my favorite parts because I love Italy and I also am a mountain biker, so I love dirt. So right now we're going up, we're topping out at one of the Last climb, we've already climbed 36 meters in this course. And so if you're feeling it, if the legs are burning, don't worry, you're almost there. So we're descending down into the ocean too, where we get to ride underneath the surface of the water and, and really in the ocean. <laughs> There's a shark. <laughs> so this beach section, we're riding next to the water with some palm trees. This is nice and flat. So this is a great opportunity to cruise. We can chat and on the pride ride, you can ask me questions. It's gonna be fun. There's the finish line banner. So I'm giving it a go. I'm sprinting to the finish line. Each week I like to use up my free time scouring the social feeds for my favourite headband hero. And this week's winner comes from Andrea Heinrich, rider for Team Aeonian. Check out this good boy, or possibly good girl, the photos cropped a little high. And so endeth another episode of The World of Zwift. Thank you for watching, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing it to you. I'll be back next week with more Zwifting content, but in the meantime, go and explore what Pride Month has to offer and check out one of the rides across the Olympic virtual series on Zwift. Until then, ride on.